This is a good one. They should make some uh, movie like uh, the Spiritual Stepford Wives and Husbands. You guys ever seen that movie, Stepford Wives? <laughs> the guys, uh, they get together and they're like, uh, you know, our wives, they're not acting right. We need them to act right. The guys, the other guys are like, yeah, yeah, me, me too. I got the same problem. Like, she don't act right. Then a doctor shows up. It's like, I'll make them act right. So they all, <clears throat> they all trick their wives into going to this doctor. And he programs them to act right. And so then when the guy has sex with her, before she didn't like it. And didn't even want to do it. But then, after they got programmed to act right, then she's like, wow, you're so good. She makes noises. Whoa. <laughs> it's the Stepford Wives. So, it's, it's like that spiritual mental illness it's like you learn the lingo go to your spiritual community peace love light all that stuff <clears throat> but if they meet somebody that really wants to break things down and question your motives question like where are you at right now then their mind is uh, I'm, I'm totally I'm, I'm like blissed out that's a new word people like that word blissed out <clears throat> but you say okay that's fine that's nice enjoy but let's like I noticed something when you were talking to this person I don't know it looked a little passive-aggressive you like didn't really want to say what you what you meant and then so so if you're trying to have a real conversation they'll, they'll just somehow go they're like gone like oh I gotta go meet my friend at the coffee place or whatever and then and they might talk about you behind your back somebody says ah oh, what do you think about so-and-so you know he seems like uh, that person does some deep introspection they'll say yeah but you know I don't know he's a little aggressive or uh, thinks too much see there's all the spiritual justification that keeps one continuing to be a Stepford wife or a husband the mind doesn't want to look at this stuff. It just wants to bypass everything and just, ah, uh, I've arrived now. Which is even more easy to do if you don't have any real challenging karmic situations that came up yet. See, later life's gonna get you. Not you, I mean, whoever, whoever this fits, but it will get a person who's um, being fake. And hiding behind spiritual formalities and pleasantries and all that stuff it's subtle stuff it's it's just another defect of character like anything else if somebody if somebody gets angry too easy they're at the post office and watching somebody in line talk to the <clears throat> the post office rep and the mind starts self-talk like what's that's such a stupid question why are they like wasting my time I got things to do man like I'm about business they're like talking stupid and then the post office girl she she doesn't even know what he's saying it's so easy to know because it's like well everybody's stupid so that's a defect of character too but I'll tell you what I'd rather have that defect than the the slick passive aggressive defect that can go unchecked see you want this stuff to come up so you can look at it if you're more if you have a defect that can't hide so easy you're gonna have to look at that life you know is going to construct situations and consequences to where you're going to have to look at that especially if you have you're in a relationship or your this behavior is coming out in some sideways way with uh, somebody you care about like they, they won't want anything to do with you the same with the passive aggressive but usually the passive aggressive attracts another passive aggressive so they're like they could be, be together 20 years and just living on the surface yeah, it can, can go on for a long time. I respect a guy named Andrew Cohen. He was, uh, he was big when I was in Rishikesh, India. Like, geez, how long's it been? Like 15 years? Yeah, 20 years maybe? Rishikesh was cool then. It was better. Now, now it's, like, it's like Thailand, how there's a massage parlor in every corner. In Rishikesh now, it's like yoga and meditation in every corner. 
So this is the way the world now does, the technological age, everything gets merchandised. So it's just what it is. But that time I was there, it was um, more authentic, you could say. But I remember I read a book, Andrew Cohen wrote uh, Living Enlightenment. And I liked it, sounded sounded good. I don't know how, if I would have read it now, 20 years later, but anyway, at the time, it sounded good. But then later it came out where, I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> it's probably with the girl, somehow, some scandal, it always happens. I'm gonna make a video about, about how God uh, uses certain things to really, you know, find out where you're at. <clears throat> What's hiding, what, you know, can this person be activated via sense, sensual you know sense pleasure or the master can can he fall there's a lot of fallen angels so that's why i say always be humble always don't think that you got it if you know it's okay if you think that but catch it catch that thought because that'll be your downfall life can can can, can construct a situation that can knock any any individual form down doesn't matter doesn't matter They've been enlightened lifetimes ago. Doesn't matter. If they're in a human form, a body, life can send some situations, man, that you, your only safety net is to stay humble and realize, God, it's by your grace that that I'm I'm being protected here. Because we can't we can't manage certain situations with just willpower alone or mental understanding. This software we have, these instincts, these uh, this karma, everybody has to take karma, even an enlightened master has to borrow some collective karma so that he can exist, this is part of the deal. That stuff, man, yeah, respect. So let me finish the Andrew Cohen story. It later came out that he, um, he admitted, he's like, I don't have it like I thought I did. Because he procla proclaimed, like I'm enlightened, basically. And I, I really respected that. It's, it's the only time I've really heard somebody do that, who was in the public eye, had this enlightenment label, and then later uh, gave that up. So we're talking about spiritual, uh, <clears throat> spiritual mental illness, basically. When you're suppressed and you're, you're, see, it's like there's a disconnection. Your mind's thinking one thing, your emotional body's doing something else, and then that's being played out in your physical body, and you just look fragmented on vibrational level for somebody who can see it, who can perceive it. You can, you can, you can sense. We can't hide our subtle karma or energy or our vibration. We can be master manipulators with our words and actions, be the best, but vibrationally, you can't fake that. So. That's my definition of uh, spiritual mental illness. Is you're not home with yourself. You're not, and so therefore when you speak, you're not one with your words. You're just repeating cliches and stuff. I like when, when somebody has a real problem and they're telling somebody, and instead of the person they're telling, just admit and say, you know what, that's heavy, man. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't have experience with that particular thing. And having, just being authentic. You see, if you just say that, that can actually give the person who's sharing this with you some spiritual juice. It can help them. Even though you didn't know how to solve the problem, you were authentic in that moment. You, you had compassion because you know, at least in your own way, what a real problem is. And you can sense this person's like, you know, there's some struggle on human level. That's authentic. And if you do have some experience with the particular situation, then you intuitively, intuitively let that flow. But catch yourself if there's an agenda that you want the person to like think like, well, that, you know, don't have an agenda that you gotta fix them or be recognized for your wisdom. No, you're sharing because you feel the spirit wants you to share, simply. Okay, now I've seen people though just, you know, if you stay on the planet long enough, you see things. <clears throat> they'll, they'll be sharing something with somebody. The other person doesn't know. They don't have experience with that, but they can't admit it. And so they'll say, oh, well, let go and let God. You don't, you don't really exist. Um, 
you know, this problem, it's all in your mind. Somebody left a comment and said, bliss and pain are the same thing. <laughs> I said, he's cool though. I just wrote and I said, okay, if you tell a person that's suffering that, do you think they'll appreciate it? And then he, he understood, that's cool. Everything's cool if there's space to exchange uh, and be authentic. Then everything's cool. You can you can you can <clears throat> disagree with me. You can whatever. If there's space and openness to allow maybe some modification in what you're thinking to to happen. So that reminds me. I'm glad I remembered. <clears throat> I'm doing a, a group a satsang. This next Sunday, a week from now, so those those are welcome who who you feel drawn to uh, attend something like that. And we're going to look at these things. I'm making this next video on uh, yeah. I'm going to make another video. <laughs> I don't want to tell you the title, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna. That's basically how I work. <clears throat> Whatever word you want to use, I don't have a, a special technique and like. It's all about meditation. If you just meditate, you're gonna, that's your answer. Just meditate, no matter what. Make yourself meditate. Like, that's not my way. I've shared in previous videos about that. But I'm gonna, I'm making a video here now to share what is my way. So then you have an idea of what we're, what we're doing in satsang. Satsang's about transformation. We're not there to just stroke each other. Like, we're there to experience a shift, if that's possible, and then, leave in a higher space than when we came this is this is what the purpose of satsang is so go see that movie stepford wives if you want all right see you